We will now chat with Brian Billick, the uh, Fox analyst and former Super Bowl winning coach with the Ravens, which seems like yesterday when he beat the Giants up in the Super Bowl, but it's now a long time ago, as a matter of fact. Uh, Brian, welcome. How are you? Well, thank you. I, you you're, uh, I appreciate you saying it felt like yesterday because, boy, it feels like a million years ago to me. You know, what do you remember about that? Tell me what you remember about that day or that game. What's st- what's you, What sticks out? It was obviously a dominant performance by your team, by your defense. Uh, you made some big plays in the passing game, but what sticks out in your mind about that day? Well, you know, it was one of those games that because of the way the game went, it was unique in that pretty much into the fourth quarter, you knew you knew you had it. And, and what that allowed you to do is kind of soak in the moment. Once they returned the kickoff for a touchdown right. that you knew would give them a little bit of life, and then we had Jermaine Lewis turn around back-to-back, right. only time in the history of the uh, yep. Super Bowl, back-to-back touchdowns. Yep. You, you knew that had to kind of take the emotion. Oh, it did. Whatever they had it left. took the life out of the stadium, gone. absolutely. Sitting yeah. in the stadium, it took the life out of the Giants' side, absolutely. So once yes. you, that happened, you kind of knew, hey, you know, we're going to be Super Bowl champs, and it allows you to kind of look around and kind of soak in the moment compared to those games where it's a last-second win, and all of a sudden you look up and you're the winner. Uh, when did you realize you had something special in that run? Was it in the regular season late, or was it not until the playoffs? No, it was well into the season that I recognized there's something special about this defense. And, you know, obviously there can be debates about whether it was the, the best single season. It was a great one, no question. It was a great one. But you, you got a sense. And remember, we were at a kind of void of quarterback, great quarterback playing the league at that time. The the the. Uh, Joe Montana's and Marino's and Aikman's, they were either out or going out. And we hadn't yet come into the Mannings and the Breezes and the Bradys and all that. So playing great defense, running the ball, I think we were second or third in the league in rushing, not turning it over was a pretty good equation to win. And it was, you know, being an offensive guy, getting well into the season before I realized, okay, this can win with this formula, and we played to that strength. You know, people might not remember now, this many years later, you were the architect of one of the greatest offenses for a single season, the Minnesota team that uh, amazingly lost to the Atlanta Falcons that year, the team that was the best team in football, I think, that year anyway, uh, and stunningly lost the game uh, to, to the Falcons. How would you compare that offense to this year's Denver offense? Oh, boy, uh, both very, very talented. You know, we had probably better balance run and pass. We had Robert Smith in the backfield with Leroy Horde. You're throwing to a Hall of Famer in Chris Carter, a future Hall of Famer in Randy Moss, Jake Reed on the outside, Andrew Glover at tight end. Um, had a Hall of Famer in the offensive line in Randall McDaniel. So that was a very talented team, a little bit more conventional than obviously what Peyton Manning does. But, boy, you got to admire what they do. When you The thing that jumps out at me about this team, they had – Five guys with 60 catchers or more. Five. I Amazing. mean, that, that's that's stunning to have that many guys with that level of productivity. So as a defensive guy, you look at that and go, you know, where do I start? Where do I start to take away the weapons of this Denver Broncos team? Very interesting, and that's a good way to get into it because this is going to be a fun game for folks to analyze because it's classic. You have the Seattle defense and especially their ability to cover and the Denver offense with their myriad of targets uh, led by a quarterback who can do so much at the line of scrimmage. But really, the first question is this, and this is the one that I think really answers the game. Can Seattle get to Peyton Manning with four men? And if they can, they're going to be a real problem. If they can't, he's going to be a real problem. Yeah, Mike, you're exactly right. You sized it up right in that you've got to be able to get to Peyton Manning with a four-man rush. And Seattle is certainly capable of that. Now, you may not get a lot of sacks because, as we know, Peyton's going to get the ball out of his hands. But you can rush a lot of throws. You can rush a lot of incompletions. And and if you can't get a four-man rush on Peyton Manning, certainly you'll change it up and you'll bring that fifth and sixth guy. But if you can't get home with a four-man rush, it's going to be a long, long day. They've got an excellent secondary. There's no question. What jumps out at me about the secondary is they led the league uh, in interceptions, but they also led the league in fewest big plays down the field. Typically, those don't go together. Good point. Good point. But the they're not gamblers, of, even though they, they're not gamblers, even though they make interceptions. Correct. They take away balls. You know what it is? They get the ball. That's the jump ball. They are fighters for the ball. They take the ball away from the receivers. They do, but I think this is the first group of receivers they will have faced all year that has the size across the board, notwithstanding Wes Welker, right. but whether it's Eric Decker, yeah, Demarius big Thomas, Julius right. Thomas, this is a big group of receivers that can match up with the size Excellent of the secondary. Point.